five. Um, we just finished a workshop in the next room. I apologize for us being a few minutes late, but it ran a few minutes over. Um, could we have the roll call, please, by the town clerk, or by the assistant town manager, excuse me. Chairman Swift Kayada. Here. Councilor Backer. Here. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor Lynch. Present. Councilor McKinney. Present. Councilor Moles. Here. And Councilor Roberts. Here. Manager McGovern. Here. And Assistant Manager Lane. Pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have two items before us this evening. Um, the first is a set of public hearings on the general fund and the special funds budget. And then after that is complete, we will be dealing with item 159, which uh, has to do um, with negotiations with the police department. So um, I want to thank everyone for being here and let you know that first we will have a brief report by David Backer, who is the chairman of, our, of the town council's finance committee. Then we will have the public hearing um, on the budget, both the general fund and the special funds, as I said. Um, I would reiterate that this is a, tonight is a public hearing, which is the council's time to hear, to listen, to input and comments from the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Um, it is the time for us to find out what your concerns and comments are. At the request of the school board, uh, the council has moved this public hearing session forward in the budget process, which started, the process started a couple months ago. And the school board had asked us to move it forward and separate it um, from the evening when the council takes its votes on the budget so that we would have more time to reflect on your comments, what we hear here tonight, before we actually do vote on May 9th at our regularly scheduled town council meeting. Thus, we will have no votes um, on the budget tonight, and we will have no council discussion or comments on the budget. Uh, this is basically just a, a chance for us to listen. It is not a chance for councillors to, to respond. We will focus on listening carefully to what you say. So, with that said, I'd like to turn it over to David. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will be very brief. Um, the town council sitting as the finance committee, and again, just so no one is confused by that, the finance committee is comprised of the members of the town council. So it's the same people simply wearing a different hat. Um, and the finance committee um, met on March 30, April 4, April 6, and April 13 to consider the various elements of the town and the uh, school budget. And at the conclusion of our April 13 meeting, the Finance Committee uh, voted unanimously to recommend to the Town Council for approval the following numbers for the fiscal year 2006 budget. And the recommendation was to approve expenditures for, and these expenditures include the municipal town services, uh, the county assessment, the school department, and community services combined. Uh, so the recommendation was for expenditures of $27,371,827 with revenues and these are combined revenues from town services, school department, and community services of $6,939,779 for a net to be raised from taxes of $20,432,048. Now, actually, I, I think I need to clarify one thing. I started off by saying those are the numbers that were recommended uh, by the Finance Committee. 
um, the numbers as recommended by the Finance Committee were actually slightly different than this um, on the revenue side and the net to taxes side. Um, the revenues as recommended by the Finance Committee at the April 13 meeting were actually slightly more by about $1,500. Um, and the difference is in the school department numbers. The school department numbers um, are coming in with revenues of about $1,500 less than apparently what was projected as of April 13. So that um, results in a net increase to the net to taxes of about $1,500 in a difference from our April 13 meeting. But those are the numbers um, as unanimously recommended. Okay, and those numbers are reflected on this one page sheet, the one that was passed out tonight, the corrected numbers. And I, I think that $1,500 um, change was just because of an updated revenue number that the school yeah. department had received. Uh, updated so, revenue from the state. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, just to correct one thing that I said before, before we get started, I had mentioned item 159, um, and I did not have the updated agenda before me. I mentioned that we would be, um, the council would be discussing negotiations with the police department, but we will also be discussing an offer received for Mitchell Road lot. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, one other clarification, because this comes up every year, um, it is the council's role by charter, uh, according to the Cape Elizabeth Charter, to set the total amount amounts for expenditures for the budgets and to set the tax rate. It is the school board's role with regard to the school department budget to allocate within that total. The council does not make decisions about educational priorities. It is rightfully the school board's duty, duty as elected as uh, a board elected by the citizens to do that. So how things are allocated, um, are de those decisions are made by the school board. And I just wanted to clarify that because it does come up every year. So, um, Okay. Uh, thank you for, again for that report, David. Um, I'd like to open, I'll declare this public hearing open. And the rules uh, are that if you would like to speak, please come forward to the podium. Uh, there's a microphone there, and that way everybody here and at home will be able to hear you. Please state your name and address so we know who you are. And um, please, if there's a long line, I'm not sure whether there will be or not, but if there's a long line, please try to keep your remarks brief so we can hear from, from everyone. Um, so the public hearing is open. If there's anyone who would like to come forward, please step to the podium. I hear one paper rustling out there. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm Scott Clark. I live at uh, Brentwood Road. Um, under Revenue School Department, is that the state contribution? In other words, is that the money that we get back from the, the state funds? Yes. Yeah, the school revenue amount includes the state school subsidy. <coughs> it also includes a use of some of the school surplus and a little bit in miscellaneous revenue as well. Uh, about, it's that amount minus about $300,000 is the amount that's received from the state. Okay, so the, this shows a 15% increase from 2000, or 2005 to 2006, and some of that is what the state is, is kicking back to the school. Do you have any idea where that's going to go, where that's going to trend? I'm thinking of the 55% thing that's passed. Where the state education, where state aid for education amount is going to go? Yeah. And is that likely to increase next year followed by increases well, based on the referendum that was passed? Given that the legislature makes its own decisions, I'm, I hesitate to predict, right. but there is supposed to be a ramp up in state aid for education statewide. I don't know what that will do locally, and I would encourage you to ask the experts um, in the school department. They, they would uh, know that better than I. 
So they haven't given any commitment to like the town or anything like that. It's just the state? Like, yes. Uh, not that I'm aware of. One thing I'd just like to point out is, is that if there's an issue in the budget, it isn't necessarily that percent, it's what the state is going to kick back just in terms of getting to that 55 percent. It seems to me that that's to me is important. So. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry, sir, I didn't catch your name. <coughs> Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to step forward, please? Yes, ma'am. Yes, good evening. My name is Jenna Sisselman, and I live at 14 Ledgewood Lane. And I'd just like to take a minute to um, speak about a couple of things that have been on my mind. Um, at the workshop two weeks ago, um, there was a reference made to the fact that, um, that the class sizes did not change for next year. Um, and it made me think about the phrase, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Um, and it's great that our class sizes will remain the same. Um, but it's also true that over the past several years, due to ever-tightening budgets from both state and local um, levels, um, that many changes have occurred for our schools. Um, I'd like to just list a few. I was sort of hoping at the workshop that there would be a list of um, both things that were going to be remaining um, in the school budget, but things that were, that were missing or that have changed. So um, I won't list them all, but I would like to list a few. Um, let's see, uh, field trip monies, stipends for teachers doing additional work, monies for professional development, um, no increase in our high school uh, science lab, support for the Latin program, the Pond Cove Summer School, um, the extension to the laptops for the high school, uh, a half-time guidance counselor at Pond Cove, early release days for curriculum development so that our teachers have common planning time, um, paying for our athletics, decreased technology supply budget, a full-time nurse, um, and then basic capital improvements such as classroom furniture, kitchen equipment, carpet cleaning, a repair, not a replacement for our theater curtain, um, custodial supplies, and replacement books. Um, the Pond Cove uh, Parent Association just recently um, granted Pond Cove um, a, a good amount of money, and there was a grade level disbursement that was made to each grade level of $1,500. And I was so surprised that three of the grades listed as what they would do with that money is replace books. Um, both just reading books, you know, that browser, that go into a little browser box, and also books that need to be replaced to support curriculum. Um, I don't think, I, I know from the numbers that were given at the workshop that we by no means spend the most on our teacher salaries and nor do we spend the most on our pupils in comparison to other communities in Southern Maine. Um, but I would like to point out that these expenditures are not extravagant and they're not frivolous. These are the building blocks, the staples if you will, of a good solid school system. And these changes are not benign. I believe that these things will change our schools um, over time and that these changes will show through. Um, uh, another thought that came to my mind was that um, I hope that as a town we have not overreacted. Um, and by that I mean um, the two resolutions that were passed in September, the first being the 3.3 cap, which is tied into the um, consumer price index on our school budget, and also um, the second resolution, which is um, the town's effort to return 100% um, of the ed educational monies from question one and the EPS funding. I, I truly appreciate the commitment to give back the monies uh, to our taxpayers, but I'm wondering if 100% is a reasonable amount and even if it's equitable. I just hope that we don't underestimate our citizen support for our schools. Um, it, it really makes me think about the two referendums um, that we overwhelmingly uh, passed this past, or actually it was, it was in the past two years. Um, the first was the building referendum. I think we were all um, shocked and amazed at the huge amount of support from our taxpayers um, to have the two buildings uh, completed. And also the overwhelming um, showing to defeat the Pulaski task cap. Um, these were not small voter turnouts. These votes, um, they came through loud and clear in support of our schools. 
And um, I, I just, I don't know, I just wonder if, if maybe this isn't an overreaction. Um, you know, the, the voters came out and, you know, made it clear that they were not willing to do anything at any risk, regardless of the outcome, to lower property taxes. They saw what it would do to our community services and to the safety of our town and our school. Um, one question that I did have in uh, you're talking about the two resolutions was whether there was ever a public hearing um, before these were passed. I know that I, I, I wasn't aware that there was one, and I just wondered if there was one. I know that we have public hearings for uh, cell phone towers and for building permits, but I was just wondering if, if there was one and if I missed it, or if that was just something that um, was voted on at a regular town council meeting. There, as, there was no public, formal public hearing. It was on the publicly published agenda. And I, I do know that I, in particular, made an effort by sending an email to the school board superintendent and the school board, I mean the school department superintendent and the school board chair before that vote um, to make sure that they were aware that it was on the agenda. It on the agenda. And it also was highly publicized. The whole topic, as you will recall, was highly publicized at that time because we voted on those resolutions, at least those of us, six of us, um, voted on those resolutions before the Pulaski Initiative. And I'm sure you'll recall there was heavy coverage in all the papers. Mm -hmm. and was there a forum like this where people could publicly get up and speak before, I mean, because they are so, those were such wide reaching. There was an opportunity that at that town council meeting for, to get up and speak. for people to speak. It was not a formal public hearing, but, but they had people the can come and, yes. Okay, people thank can you. Come and speak on any item on the town council agenda. Okay, thank so. you. Um, I tried to think of an analogy today of, of where our school um, is positioned right now. And the only one I could come up with was a, was a health care analogy. Um, and in order for a person like a school system to remain healthy and strong, we need to take preventative measures. It is more difficult and certainly more expensive to fix an unhealthy or weak school. And it is much more cost effective and a lot easier in the long run to maintain support and promote a healthy school system. I would like to encourage you and ask all of you to be as creative and supportive in our school board's efforts to maintain the excellent schools that Cape Elizabeth is known for. Thanks very much. For Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to get up and speak? Okay. Um, hearing Seeing no more for people rising, I declare this public hearing closed. And I want to thank everybody for their um, input and comments. And I want to also thank uh, David Backer for his chairmanship of the Finance Committee. He did an excellent job this year at moving us forward. Um, I also want to thank the town manager on the, and the municipal employees who worked so hard on the municipal budgets and the Sue Weatherby and her folks on community services and the superintendent and all the school board members and everyone else in the school department who worked so hard on their budget. I know everyone did an excellent job and the, I'd like to uh, commend them for their efforts because it was hard work and thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that's it for the public hearing. I'll Give a one, I'll just, in just a second, let's let the room clear. It used to be a little longer, Michael, so. Yes, do you have the updated agenda? No, I don't have it. Here, it's just, it brings it's in the such, road such a word in the reference. <laughs> All right. Um, Item number 1590405. Do I hear a motion? I'll go ahead and make a motion. 
I'll motion that in accordance with uh, 1 MRSA section 405 paragraph 6D that the Town Council enter into executive session to discuss negotiations with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association and in accordance with 1 MRSA section 405 paragraph 6C to discuss an offer received for the Mitchell Road lot authorized to be listed with a broker at the February 14th, 2005 Town Council meeting. Second. And moved and seconded. Is there discussion? I would note for the record that um, we may be, we will be returning to public session after this executive session is over and there may well be votes um, having to do with this item at that time, but we will be turning the cameras off now. Thank you very much. Yes, we've got a vote. Got a oh, vote. I'm sorry. <laughs> we've got a vote. All in favor of going to executive session? It's unanimous. Thank you. And now we can turn.